Welcome to the showcase and tutorial of our brand new product Altep Easy Decals. If the concept of what you're seeing here looks familiar, that's probably because it is. Altep Easy Decals is a reworked and upgraded version of a tool called Stamp It from the creator BB3D. They've kindly passed the product on to us because they no longer have the time and resources to continue the development. We worked with them to create a version of the tool that the community has been asking for. So we added intuitive decal placement, full PBR decals, procedural damage, color and opacity control, and made a user-friendly UI. To make the transition easier, we're hosting a launch sale and adding an additional discount code that can be used if you already own Stampit. With all that being said, enjoy the tutorial. So as usual, the first thing that I'm going to show you guys is how to install the add-on itself. Take the zip file that you've downloaded, make sure you don't unzip it, and simply drag and drop it into Blender. Make sure enabled add-on is ticked and click OK. And then down at the bottom, you will see installed easy decals. If we now press N on the keyboard, you can find the add-on over here. Now, before we get into using it, I'll just quickly show you how to uninstall it as well. Go to Edit, Preferences. And then instead of add-ons, you need to go under Get Extensions and you will find Easy Decals here. And you can use this drop-down to uninstall it. Now with that out of the way, let's get into adding our first decal. So simply select an object, click Add New Decal, select an image that you want to use. I'm going to use this Blender sticker over here. And you will see that your mouse gets a little arrow that allows you to place the decal. So once I click... I can then use my mouse to define the scale of the decal and also the rotation. So you simply click to place, to scale and to rotate and then your decal is stuck to your object. Now before we even get into the UI side, I want to show you how to actually move these decals. Because if you were just to select this empty and try to move it to this side, you will see that it gets distorted. So you would need to also rotate it and position it out so that it's facing the surface. The way these decals actually work is they look at the surface of your object and then the empty for the decal needs to be perpendicular to it for it to not have a distortion. There's two ways we can move these decals a lot easier. One is by going up to snap face, changing it to face and tick align rotation to target. Now I have press G to move and I also hold left control. The decal will automatically rotate itself and stick to the surface wherever I place my mouse on. You can also use the add-ons surface projection toggle over here that it will automatically detect if you're selecting a decal is empty and it will enable the snapping feature for you. So this allows you to still work in Blender just like you would and whenever you select an empty it will toggle this on for you. So now on to the UI itself. It's a pretty self-explanatory UI, so there isn't much to cover, but there are still a few things that I want to point out. For instance, if you were to take this sphere and just try to duplicate it, expecting the decal to come along with it, unfortunately, that's not how this works. And then you would think, oh, I just need to select the, the empty as well. And if you duplicate that, you will see that the decal also doesn't work. So you need to actually use the duplicate object with decals button over here, and that will create a copy of the object with all the decals that you've added to it and everything will be a unique variant so you can change this decals properties without affecting the original one. So continuing with the rest of the UI if we go ahead and add a graffiti sticker to our wall here I'll just place it right there you're gonna see that each decal gets added into this tab down below so when I'll add more decals down here they will all list in these drop downs. Each object has its own decals, so there's hide all and show all decal buttons over here that allows you just to preview the object with and without decals. And then up top you have a global toggle, so this toggles all decals and hides all empties as well across your whole scene. So this is kind of a mute button for this add-on. On each row for a decal you will see a select empty button which allows you just to quickly select the empty box. You can also toggle its visibility. This is a duplicate decal button that allows you to create another variant. Uh, this allows you to layer decals, which we'll get into in a bit. And the last one, of course, just deletes it. If we drop this down, you're going to see that we have surface, damage, and texture maps. In the surface drop down, you're going to be able to adjust the opacity, the hue, saturation, brightness values. You can make these decals emissive. You can change their roughness or metallic values. And if your decal also has normals, or a normal map, it will give you these settings here as well. Moving on to damage, if we increase the noise amount here, you're going to see that we get new controls about our noise. It allows us to change our scale, our roughness, our contrast values, so we can add some procedural wear and tear 
to our decals as well. And down at the bottom, you will see texture maps. Now for this instance, where I've just used a simple image, it was unable to find any roughness, normal displacement or opacity or alpha maps. So I just used the albedo map that it found. But if you want to use a decal that has all of these maps, those images just need to be in the same folder as the main color image that you're selecting. The add-on will automatically find all the images and apply them to the decal itself. So let's now just add a dirt decal to our wall here. And I can give you another useful tip is layering these decals. You're going to see that as soon as I start layering them, they're going to start looking better and more realistic. And another thing is also adjusting the opacity of these decals. The opacity plays a huge factor in blending any decal that you put on any surface. And with layering, it's also important that you take note of the order of the decals. So you can change that over here. And it gives it more of a natural feeling if you get the order right. One important thing to note is with these empty boxes that you see in your viewport, if you move these too far away from a surface, the decal will actually not apply. So the decal applies only where the empty actually touches the surface. You can actually use this trick by taking a decal and extending its empty through an object and you will also be placing decals on the backside. Another thing I can mention is that these decals are parented to the objects themselves. So if your object is a rigid body, the decals will stay on them. One small thing you have to look out for is if you're using a cloth object, you actually need to bake the decal first because the decal won't stick to the cloth object itself just by default. One simple way we can do that is if we open the shader editor, we can go create a new image texture. Let's just create a new one, call it bake. I'm going to leave the resolution on 1000 by 1000 and click create new image. Now simply select the image, go into render, bake. Also make sure you're in cycles. And I recommend watching a baking tutorial or maybe I'll even do one later on for a more dedicated guide with easy decals. But for now, you just want to leave it on combined. You want to bake the lighting that you need for your scene. In this case, I'm just going to use both and click bake. Now that that is finished, we can simply plug this in. We can close this out and also remove the decal that we had before. And now we're using an image texture with the baked decal on our object, meaning if we start a simulation, the decal will be on our cloth. So with all of that being said, this kind of wraps up the showcase of the add-on. I hope it was understandable. I hope it makes sense. I'm really excited to see how you guys will receive this product. And I'm also really thankful to everybody that's coming over from Stamp It. This add-on was quite a feat for us to rework and complete. So we're really thrilled to see how you guys put it to use. So thank you again, everybody, and hope to see you very soon.